Lindsay and welcome back to Blushing Pink Stitches. Today is Monday the 4th of December and this is Gloss Tube number 43. Um, if you're coming back and watching my video again then I want to say thank you very much and I hope you enjoy what you see today and then if you're somebody who's new then um, I want to say welcome. I hope you stick around and find something that you like and continue watching. So happy Advent season everyone. Um, it's the officially the lead up to Christmas now. I've done half of my Christmas shopping. Um, I think I might actually get the other half done over the next couple of nights. So I'm somebody who doesn't like going out and doing Christmas shopping. I just find that experience too stressful. So that's one of the good things about the advent of online shopping is you can just do it from the comfort of your sofa and not have to go out and bump into loads of people and you know freeze to death <laughs> so um yeah so yeah nearly done with all of that not far away to go now um i've had a weird few weeks in terms of um i've had some illness so i had like a, a really heavy cold and cough um then last was it last Saturday? Yeah, it was last Saturday. I went to the Essex Needles um stitchy day. And I did something to my back during that day. Um, and then for the next few days I had like a really bad back afterwards. I don't know what I did to it. Um and um yeah, it's just been a weird few weeks basically. Uh, but I have I feel like I've made some good progress in my projects. Um I talked, I had a good response to when I talked about my whip rotation in um, my last video. So I have mostly been using that, but I have had a few new starts over the last week or so. So um, I'm gonna show you a couple of those because I'm still working on my rotation of one of them and I'll show you that to you next time. Nice cup of tea. So um, I'm just gonna dip pull from the pile that I've got down here. Let's get my tablet ready uh, here we go right so this first one is um winter montage it's a i've got like the light on behind the camera I may have to switch that off. Um, it's a um, chart by Painfree Crafts and it's artwork by Janet Stever. Um, I worked on this for two days and I got 1,547 stitches. So this is now sitting at 3.52%. I'm going to put a picture on the screen of the last time that you saw it. It was earlier in the year at some point, I think. And then show you what it looks like now. So here we are now. Let me just switch that light off and see. Yeah, it's a bit like dark in general because it's like a really overcast day today. And um, it's just dark basically. <laughs> uh, but I think it will show up my project better if I switch that light off. Um, so yeah, this is where we got up to. So I basically managed to finish the first page. This first page is completely done. And then obviously I've worked, moved on to work on page number two. So yeah, 3.52% um, this is now sitting at. And I just love the vibrancy of those reds and those greens. I think they look so lovely. And this was a pleasure to work on. So yeah, that's the first project that I worked on. Oh, he's on the side here. There we go. Okay, second one. Um, I won't be able to give you any sort of progress update for in terms of stitch count or whatever because this is a non-counted project. This is Moon Hair. It's by Suzanne. Is it Geisman? I think it is. Um, this was in. You could originally 
get this as a heaven and earth design uh, but they've retired the chart so i'm stitching it from a couple of issues of the world of cross stitching magazine it was like a two-part thing um yeah and i worked on this one for three days i was working on this one while um when i did my last floss tube but obviously i didn't show it because i was in the middle of it but over those three days I managed to get over the other side. So I'm going to put a picture up, up on the screen of the last time that you saw it. And I worked my way completely across to the other side of the chart. So this is how wide the chart is. So you can see the rabbit's ear coming in in the middle. And then obviously there's lots of background in there. Um, this bit here is where the moon um, is. And I decided um, rather than do it, I think it caused to just white. Um, my friend Sandy um, has also stitched this chart and I think she did the same um, she stitched hers in like a sparkly thread so I picked up a skein of um, white etoile thread and I think I'll do that I'll do the moon in that colour just so that it's got a little bit of shimmer to it um, but yeah really enjoyed working on that so it's just the first row of block like and it's not even a 10 by 10 block i can't remember how many stitches high it is but yeah but i managed to get over to the other side which i think is a really good achievement so i really enjoyed working on that one too um lots of pretty blues in that one okay then the next one is a new start so this is actually a bit of haul as well. Um, I picked up in the Artisy sale um, a few, a couple of charts. Oh, did I just pick one up? I'll share them with you later anyway. And then I saw a lady on Instagram stitching this. And so before the sale finished, I also bought this one. Um, so this is Amsterdam Canal. It's the large version. Um, and it's not artwork by anyone in particular. Um, it's from a licensing company. But I really liked all of the colourful details on that. And I have been to Amsterdam before. It was a really lovely couple of days. Um, and I just love everything about that scene. So I worked on this one for three days, I think. And let's just get up the chart I used a, a spare piece of 25 count I had in my stash because I was stitching an oriental piece on this and then realized I should have been stitching it on light blue so I stitched 1120 stitches and this is at 0.52 percent so switch over this way so you can see this is where we got up to so it's just um the tree in the corner and we got some sky as well I was a bit worried about that white showing up in the corner but I think it'll be okay once it's sort of filled in down here because you've got a bit of white up here too um yeah there's quite a lot of confetti um in this first section and um, it's only got 90 colours so it's not max colour or anything but um there's a there's quite a lot of confetti in that tree and this is the first sort of gable I suppose you could say or roof line of the of this of the first building down here coming in so yeah I'm really pleased to have started that um I haven't started a full coverage in a while I don't think that is that one Okay. My second new start um, is one that I started with my friend Becky at the Stitchy Day last Saturday. Um, we sort of planned to start this one together 
and it is Nightingale by uh, Mirabilia or Nora Corbett. It's my first full Mirabilia that I've started and I got the, well, most of the kit from Megan at Coffee Craft Fabrics. Um, and then, um, yeah, then I got the DMC in September and I actually changed what fabric um, this came on. So I'm still stitching it on a piece of Coffee Craft fabric, but this is a more pinky piece of fabric than I originally had in the kit. So um, this is where we got up to. So I started in the middle because it's not a square piece. Oh, put that in the middle like that. Yeah, so this is sort of just a bit of her dress, basically. It's kind of hard to work out whereabouts it is. Um, but it's sort of, where would you say it is? Um, I think sort of here. I think that's where I've started. Ish. So yeah. Um, I really like this piece of fabric. It's much more pink. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see the pinkness of it. Or it's coming up a little bit brown on the camera. Um, but yeah, it's really beautiful. And um, so I was stitching it with all the called for. And I worked on that, I think, for, again, three days. It's really lovely stitching. So um, my friend Becky has got the greeny fabric um, that Megan dyed. Um, so it'd be interesting to see how it stitches up on the different um, colour fabrics. Yeah, that's that one. Okay, this is see if I can get it from here. This is Christmas Birds from Our Forest Embroidery. That's what it's going to look like when it's finished. Um, and I worked on this for four days and I got it to 44.73%. I wanted to get it to full um so no, no actually I think I wanted to get it to 30% and then I think I drew I must have drawn four days when I did my spinny wheels um and I, so I just kept going for the four days and got it to 44 nearly 45% um so this is where we're up to now so I um stitched finished stitching this bird house um, I stitched this um, cardinal here and the branches that he's sitting on this snowflake this snowflake this snowflake and then this Christmas tree so yeah it's lovely and um, I haven't been talking about fabrics much have I if I'm stitching a full coverage it's on 25 count um, even weave. My Mirabilia, you saw the fabric anyway, but it's that's a 28 count even weave. Um, yeah, this is a 32 count summer khaki linen, two over two. Um, so yeah, I this there's four pages to this pattern, and this first page is completely done now. And obviously, we've got a little bit of page two and a little bit of page three down here. So I think next time I work on this, I'll probably work on completing page two. I think that's what I'll do. But yeah, the colours really pop on those. I love the reds and the greens. I've seen somebody, I can't remember who it was, um, finish this as a pillow. I'm going to sneeze, sorry. <coughs> <coughs> Um, yeah I've seen somebody finish that as a pillow and it looked really lovely so um, yeah it was kind of really encouraging me to continue um, okay next one is 
um, Florence the Owl. This is a kit by um, The World in Stitches. Um, and I worked on this for two days and I wanted to reach the 75% mark and I did that. I got to 80.19%. So I was basically, I'd already completed um, the head and I think one of these leaves. So I put in the, the other leaves and I don't know whether that's like a moon or something. And then I came down and started working on his body. So you can see his wings coming in. So there's not actually, I mean, I'm at 80%, so there's not much more to go. So I've got to finish those wings and then complete the body and that little, little bit of wispy tail. I think the next time this comes out, it's going to be a finish. So my friend Becky has very kindly offered to make it into a bag for my daughter, which is going to be amazing. So, yeah. Um, oh no, I'm not done with the new stars. <laughs> um, this is a gold collection petite kit called Chickadees in Spring. And I'd been wanting to start another petite kit for a while because I finished um, Seashell Treasures in the summer, I think. I think I finished it in August. And so I, li I like having a petite on the go. And I really liked this one because I, I do like birds. And this one has got some lovely pink and purple colours in it. So I decided to pick that one up. Um, I'm using all the kit materials. It comes with a 16 count dove grey Ada. And then of course all the floss. And I really like the colour of this Ada. It's like a grey blue. It's lovely. So this is how far I got in um, three days. So I started in the middle again. This is the edge of this side. It's not going to be particularly big. It's, um, what is it? Five by seven. So I haven't done any back stitching yet because I haven't finished off this bird or whatever, like all the stuff that's around it. So I'm sort of alternating between the bird or the flower and the branch and some of the background. But all of that background so far is stitch in half stitch. And I really like like the watercolour effect of it. I think it's so pretty. So this was a, an absolute pleasure to work on. I was stitching it in hand because it's such a small piece of Ada and I don't really have a um, frame that's small enough, but stitching it in hand was fine. Yeah, it's just really pretty. I love it. So, yeah, I mean, obviously I've still got a ways to go, but that doesn't matter. Um, I just thought I'd talk a little bit again about, I need, I still need to do that video about like starting a Dimensions kit. But um, Dimensions kit, the newer ones anyway, they come with these floss organisers and you get all of the floss hanging off of them. Um, I can't work off of these cards. Um, I like working off of floss drops. So I cut the floss off of those cards as I'm sort of using it and put it on these. So for example, um, this is the black. And I write on the back the symbol the dimensions floss number and then whether it's a cross a full cross or a head stitch and then the number tells me how many strands um so there are a couple of um, floss drops in here where you've got a thread doing a couple of different things let me see if i can find one of those um no that's a blend we'll go back to that Oh, I can't find one now. Oh, okay, here we go. So this colour here, I haven't actually got any more of. And it, oh, that's a blend as well. That's like not really the, it's an example, but it's not the greatest of examples. Um, that's another blend. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to find one now, am I? Oh, okay, here we go. So this colour green here, 
I've written on the back again the colour number um, for this symbol here it's a full cross with um, two strands and for this symbol here it's half a cross with two strands so I just I know what I'm doing in terms of that thread and then I have got floss drops just for blends so what I do with those if I find one again here we go here's an example I will put the two different colour numbers one plus one so that's a strand of each and this tells me that it's a tenth stitch and then the symbol and then I will hang spare blends off of it so it works for me um, but I will do that video when I've got some time um, but yeah just to kind of give you a little bit of an idea what I do with my dimensions kits Let's have a little bit more tea. Okay, I worked on Sorcerer Mickey. This is a chart by, I think it's 447 Shades of X Stitch. Um, I worked on this for two days and I got 1578 stitches and I'm now at 6.25% so, um, so did I already say that I put a picture up on the screen if I didn't I'll do it here now uh, but yeah 6.25% and this is where we're at now so I am mostly using CXC threads for this, but I am um, adding in some DMCs where I don't like the shade difference because I feel like it matters with this one. Did I even hold up the picture? I don't think I did. <laughs> this is what it's gonna look like when it's finished. But yeah, I mostly do a top left start when it comes to full coverage. So yeah, you can sort of see his magic cloud and then the lots of blues in the background. So that's where we got to with that one. And then I've got two more left. Okay. This next one is Autumn Montage. I worked on this one for four days. So this is what it's gonna look like when it's finished. It's another in the series. So it's Pain Free Crafts, Janet Steve Rowe artwork. Um, and I got 1,660 stitches on this one in four days. And this is now sitting at 2.47%. So um, I'll put a picture up on the screen of the last time you saw it, which was actually last October. And um, when I looked back, I couldn't believe how long it had been. So. This is where we're up to now. So, yeah, just made it down to like to the bottom of that section. So you can see like the bottom, like it's not a shelf, but like the outline coming in. But it just looks so realistic. That's why I enjoy these particular charts so much. And the detail is amazing. So yeah, there's that one. Back in here. So I'm glad I got that one back out again after all that time. Okay, and then the last one is of course my sort of focus project my 100 stitches a day project so it is super size max color a stitching shelf by amy stewart and charted by Haid. um and i'm going to put a picture up on the screen of the last time that you saw it so i've just i think i just started on page nine when you saw it last so i've been beavering away on that and this is now sitting at 10.41 so yeah this is the page that I've been working on and it just goes down to about what I think is the lady's head coming in here so I've not got much more to do on that page I was tempted at the weekend just to stitch on this but I didn't in the end 
Um, but yeah, the detail in the windows and all of like the blossom and the leaves is just incredible. So yeah, and then you've got the lady coming in here and then this is like a fireplace, I think. Yeah. But I won't stitch her until I finish this page over here because I do two across. Um, yeah, I do like a pair of pages and then I go down and do the other ones. So yeah, really, really happy with it. <laughs> okay, let's put this back in here. Um, Debbie from Mama Bear Stitchery put a video up at the... It must have been December the 1st. And she bought a blanket, a throw blanket with this material. Um, and I immediately messaged her and said, please send me the link for that. Because I'm going to have to put that on my wish list. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. Um, so that's all the stitching. I've got my box of goodies. Which I haven't printed everything off. So I think what I'm going to do first is um show you a few images of things that i've bought electronically that i haven't managed to print um cover pages for yet um so uh, yeah i bought a few things in the um black friday sales basically because you know it's kind of hard to resist so the the first one that I bought is um, Home is Where the Wreath is by uh, Stitching with the Housewives. I'd had this on my wish list for a while and it's just the H, M and E letters and then you buy the the O packs separately. Although this looks like you, do, you get a wreath pattern, which maybe you could use for December or just like a generic one, I don't know. Um but they were having a 20% off sale, so I decided to grab that. Um, this one is called the 297 Sampler. I can't remember what Etsy shop I bought this from now. Let's um, see in my purchases. Um... This is from Nara X Stitch Patterns on Etsy. And I, she does a few different kind of co colour combinations of this. And I really, really like them. So this is the 297 sampler. And so I got that. Um, another one that I got was... Um, what's this one called? Dreaming in Colour um, by Golden Kite. They were having a... Black Friday sale and I think looking at this now they've still got 30% off of everything um so this is the um like standard size chart but blended colors um and I've never stitched blended colors in a full coverage before um but I really liked the look of this I just love the color in it so I decided I'm just going to get that now um a chart from Cross Stitch for Everyone is called Bees a Buzz. Um, so, and this is, I, I think the black is stitched on this, but I would look to do it on a, a black piece of fabric just because who wants to do that number of black stitches? I can't remember how many um, stitches it is. I've got it loaded on here. How many black stitches? 57,000. So, uh, yeah, I don't want to do that many black stitches. That would be just so boring for ages. So I think I will end up doing it on a piece of black fabric and omitting the, um, the black background. So, um, yeah, I got that one. What else is on here? Oh, yes, this is... Um, England Railway poster it's by a shop called Vivsters and I saw um Brenda from Handwork Maniac she bought this a few months ago um and I really liked it and my husband really likes these like old 
um old style like travel posters um so they, they've got she's got this one she's got another one of like a beach scene which i really like as well but i bought this one to begin with um and then the other one that i don't have printed is called girl and autumn landscape it's by um, an etsy shop called maya stitch so um yeah i just really liked the colors in that one she looks really beautiful it's got the pumpkins and stuff like that yeah she's still got a 50 percent off sale of all of her charts so um yeah worth having a look what does that one say yeah that's normal price now um yeah so they're the ones that i i hadn't managed to print off um what else have i got in here i'm just gonna work my way through so hobbycraft were having a half price sale on their kits and i bought three a few weeks ago and then i bought one when i was back there yesterday buying some stuff for bella um i just happened to have a look at what they had happened to um, so this is Rosie's on white chair. This is one that I'd had on my wish list for a while just because of the colours in it. I think a lot of this isn't stitched. You've just got some half stitches around the outside. And then you're mainly focusing on this bit. Um, so yeah. I did take it to the till and double check because this didn't have a, a half price sticker on it. But she did say, oh yeah, it's half price. So I, I got that. And these comes with um 14 count beige ada and then you can see all of the threads um let's put this over here Got some things to show oh i didn't show my ffo well, i'm gonna have to go and get my ffo hold on <laughs> okay so i actually managed to ffo something this is my daughter's birth sampler so i just avoid trying to avoid the glare so this is a frame I bought from out of breath now. <laughs> the range. It did come with a mount, but the mount was much wider than this. So I ordered um, the right size mount from a company on eBay. I can't remember the company's name now. They are in the UK. Um, if you would like to know where you could get these, then just message me. Um, but yeah. So I switched out the mount and I just framed it myself. It's not 100% perfect, but what I will say is that a few videos ago, I asked them some advice about getting creases out of Ada. Um, and a few of you gave me some great advice. So basically what I did with this was I pre-ironed it and then I soaked it in woolite, um, in some warm water and some woolite for... I don't know, like half an hour, took it out of the water, laid it out to dry, and while it was still, later on while it was still damp, I ironed it again, and it got like 95% of the creases out. Um, So yeah, that was some really good advice. So if you're looking to make sure that you get creases out of Ada, then that, that would be the way to go for me. So yeah, this is now sitting in her bedroom, um, up on the side and I'm so pleased that she finally has a birth sampler up in her room <laughs> okay there you go there's that I have ever would a couple of other things um, but I can't show you those because they're gifts one's for like a secret Christmas exchange and the other one is a gift for a friend um, and so I don't particularly want to show it um what else have we got oh today i received i'm scrubbing things today i received in the post the second from last i think this is number six and there's one more beach boardwalk chart from peakside this is the saltwater taffy shop so i got that today one more of those to go um i won a giveaway from beth what's the name of her channel the steadfast stitcher um she was giving away a copy of simplicity by cottage garden samplings and i am stitching the love one of this um but i do really like a lot of the others in the series and i want it it was so lovely to hear 
So yeah, got that in the post today. So I haven't messaged Beth yet, but I will. Um, what else? Okay, so this is a piece of fabric that I bought at the Essex Stitchy Day last weekend. So I bought this piece of fabric here. It's looking quite purple in this light, but it's it's more pink. It's pinky mottled, um, 28 count linen. And I bought it to stitch from this book, Oriental Odyssey by um, Joan Elliott. The, where is she? This one, Lady Beauty. I think she's going to look really lovely on that fabric. So I did a royal broidery restock order and I included the threads for this. So I'm going to start her when that comes in those threads. And she just has one metallic, so there's some gold metallic around this, I don't know what you would call it. Um, so I'll just get the DMC version of that, but um, yeah. I think she's going to look incredible and this, this is just a fat water and she'll fit on there uh what else have we got um i don't know where i could be oh yes uh my friend jenny on instagram finished this chart and i messaged her to say can i buy it from you basically this is santa by mirabilia and hers looked incredible and it had been on my wish list and um, so yeah i bought it from her and she very kindly sent me all of her leftover beads and um, when i had a look at these i mean there's enough in here to stitch i think the whole pattern so i won't need i won't need to get a bead pack which is just incredible so thank you very much jenny and um, so yeah he'll go on my list to stitch i bought a couple more oh, i've got one in my bag hold on oh. um from the d stash table i bought um Redolf from nora corbett um from andrea who was there on the day so i think i picked up cupid when i was there in september from Susie. so now i've got Redolf. so yeah i'll slowly collect these when i see them for a good price um, and from Zarina, I bought the two charts that had been on my wish list for a while. One is um, Snow Queen. I love this one. She just looks amazing. She's a big one, though, and she's got a whole list of beads and treasures. So, And then the other one I got was Red. Um, and there are some good conversions of this, but I do like it in the red and the black. So that's how I'll stitch it. So I got those two charts from her. Um, I was watching a lady called Anna. Amy Loved to Loves Toes recommended or like mentioned her in a video. And so I watched her whip parade from the end of last year. Um, and she was stitching a pattern out of this booklet here. This is Southward Bound. It's a leisure arts leaflet by and the artwork is by randy mcgovern um so there's two charts in here the timber mallards and the uh, wood ducks and so well mallards i just i just had to i had to get it um i really do like the effect of that so but you have got the wood ducks as well and you can see it a bit more clearly here but I got this for like, this was really cheap on eBay. So um, I just picked it up. Um, oh, this was um, a heaven and earth chart that I picked up in the last sale. They've got one going on at the moment. But um, this is Beachcomber's Bounty, Max Colours. This has been on my wish list for a while. And I kitted it up with some 28 count um, gridded even weave that I was uh, very kindly given recently. Um, so yeah, I've got that in there to start. Um, another artsy purchase. 
uh, was Secret Temple. I think I saw um, my friend Julie from the Essex Stitchy Day. She was stitching this. Or she bought it. I think she bought it a while ago. Um, and again, like I have a piece of that 28 count even weave left over. So I kitted it up with that. Um, a couple of other paper charts. Now oh, that's got all bent. And a one more heaven and earth chart. I got Haunted House Max Colours by Donna Gelsinger. This was a very popular Halloween release that a lot of people started. Um, and I saw Dawn Marie. She made quite a lot of progress on stitching in the top left hand corner um, over the past couple of months. So I had to get that. I won't start that one now because it's not the season two anymore but i've got it and then i bought a couple of charts from the cross stitch studio when they were having their annual 20 percent off sale i bent that one and um, this is called small and mighty and debbie from creatively yours started this one and i've seen it i've seen it on instagram and facebook i love the colors and of course it's a bird and then this one I'd had on my wish list for a while. This is a crop of a chart called Hiding Place. I didn't want to do the entire thing, but I think the crop is enough. So yeah, I got that one too. Um, I got some fabric to stitch the snow. Oh, what's that doing in there? Oh. There's a random beach boardwalk and then only four of the others. So I'll have to grab that out of there. Let's just leave that there. The Snow Place um, series. I'm missing number one. It's in my pattern cupboard. Um, I saw, again, my friend Julie started these on a fat quarter. And I didn't realise, like, all in a row. And I didn't realise that you'd be able to do that on a fat quarter. Um, so I bought a piece of 28 count um, opalescent linen. In like, It's like a really light bluey green colour probably not going to be able to get the full effect of it it's more grey on here but it's more blue um, and just to do them all in a row so yeah I'm going to have to find the other one of those a um, couple of pieces of fabric from the D-Sash table from the lovely Zoe these are Crafty Kitten fabrics, which I never had because, of course, she's stopped dyeing now. These are both 32 counts and they're both 9 by 12s. So one's Murano and one's Jobelin. So they're both even weeds, aren't they? So I liked the colours of both of them. I figured I could fit like a small on both of those and they were a good price. So I bought those. Um, I also kitted up with a piece of fabric. Um, Stargazer by Mirabilia. I saw um, Sarah from Stitching Mummy. She has done a pink conversion of this, and I don't like the colours on this. I don't like the the fabric that is stitched on. I just think it's very blur. Basically, it's not. It does. It's not. It doesn't appeal to me. But I'll put a picture up on the screen of her pink conversion of what she stitched of it so far and she does have that conversion on her blog so i picked up a piece of 28 count even weave in this lovely navy color to stitch that on so i will need to get the dmc and the uh, beads does it have any chronic no just dmc and mill hill but i've got the fabric now which is good and she does fit on a fat quarter uh, so yeah, that's that. Um, I watched, and I'm sure a lot of you did, Calico Whimsy's Dimensions Kit Parade that she put up recently. Um, and I found this Dimensions mini banner on eBay. This is a Christmas one called Share Love. And it was a really good price, so I picked it up. I've added so many kits to my wish list from that video, and I'm sure lots of others of you have done the same. <laughs> um, so yeah, it comes with everything you need, including the um, 
metal banner is in there too, I believe. Yeah, I can see it in there. So yeah, everything that you need is in there. I got that. Um, this was off Facebook D stash. This is um, English Roses by Mirabilia. Another one that had been on my wish list for a while. My Mirabilia wish list is definitely diminishing. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I got that one. I saw Nadia from Nad's X Stitch. She finished this and actually she won the prize for it, didn't she? At the recent Mirabilia or this year's Mirabilia retreat. It's got some ribbon work in it and things. It was just stunning. So, um, yeah. And then the, the three other things I have in here are the other kits that I got from Hobbycraft in their Black Friday sale. So I got, um... Elegant Geisha, the petite kit. I'd wanted her for a while. I bought Beguiling Tiger in the petite. And then the last one I got was um the just the full kit of Indian Peacock. And I didn't really, I didn't show you the back of these. The tiger one comes with this tan. Or oh, they're calling it beige. 18 cat beige aids are in the threads. Um, and Elegant Geisha comes with ivory Ada in the threads. And then Indian Peacock comes with 14 cat natural Ada. And then all the threads. Look at those blues. Lovely. So, yeah. I've got what I think is like a massive dimensions um kit stash but it's brilliant <laughs> so um yeah so that's everything that i have to share with you today um i have of course been thinking about next year like most people have i would have thought i know some people have already started posting videos about their plans for next year um i don't think i'm going to post a plans video only because I didn't meet many of my goals this year and I'm very much in the mindset of I just want to do whatever I want to do I don't want to be tied down by anything and I think my I'm going to continue keeping a stitching shelf as my focus I've worked really hard on it this year and I feel like I've made a really good chunk of progress on it um so I want to continue in that vein next year. So I might talk to you moving forward about what I'm going to do with that. But otherwise, it will just be stitch on what I want when I want and start what I want when I want, basically. Um, I don't want to be restricted by anything and also don't want to feel guilty about not meeting goals. Um, not that I do feel guilty about it, but I'm very much of the opinion, well, what's the point in setting a goal if I'm not even going to try it um and you know when it comes to your hobbies some people are really goal orientated people and they enjoy that in their hobbies as well as perhaps in their careers or whatever um i don't enjoy that when it comes to hobbies just um they fizzle out for me very quickly so I just want to be able to relax and enjoy what I'm doing. And if that means starting lots of things or if it means not really having any idea of where I'm going with something, then it's fine. I don't care. <laughs> you do you. I'll do me. Whatever you decide to do is absolutely fine. You know, it is your hobby. And also it's, you know, life, you know, it's your life. You have people have other commitments you know, they have, they might have some health issues, they might, um, yeah, like, I, I, I just think you should never feel guilty, or, um, what's the word I'm looking for, guilty, or, like, you're not enough when it comes to your hobby, because that's a load of rubbish, of course you are, um, yeah, you you do what is best for you, and that is always enough. Um, so yeah, so I'm not going to do a plans video this year. Um, I will come back to you at some point in December with an, with some sort of an update. 
Um, and of course, I'll do my whip parade at the end of December. I will probably do it either on New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, just because I like having that. This is where we're at with everything. Um, yeah, so I'll do that, hopefully. Yeah, so I don't really have much else to report. Um, I hope you're all having a good couple of weeks, that you're enjoying the run up to Christmas. Uh, we took Bella to see Santa at Audley End last weekend and she absolutely loved it. Um, and we've got another Santa thing just before Christmas. She's got a couple of Christmas parties. <laughs> She's got it all going on. We went for a nice Christmas meal with our um, the other parents in our NCT group on Saturday, which was really lovely. And actually, it's the first time that we've got dressed up for an evening out since last year. We haven't done that in over a year which is really really bad but such is life um so yeah that was really lovely we had a really lovely meal at a restaurant in colchester called the old siege brasserie if you're local to the area i'd highly recommend it um the food is fabulous um yeah and it's in a really historic building um and you can read about the history of the building when you're in the restaurant it's lovely so um yeah that was nice and we've got obviously got some Christmassy things planned we've already got our decorations up um we put them up when we got back from all the end um yeah so it's all go at the moment really um I hope you're all enjoying December and you know if you celebrate the holidays then the run up to the holiday season and if you don't and having a lovely lovely December anyway and I will be back in two or three weeks time with another stitchy update thanks very much everybody bye